Okay. All right. So let's do, and we've already kind of done some shear problems. Um, but let's do another one. Okay. So we've got this one. This lap joint is connected together using 1.25 uh, diameter bolt. If the bolt is made from a material having a stress strain diagram that is approximately to shown, uh, determine the shear strain developed in the shear plane of the bolt when P is equal to 75 kips. All right, so if this is 75 kips, and y'all do know that a kip is 1,000 pounds, all right, KSI, it's kips per square inch. PSI is pounds per square inch. They're off by a factor of a thousand. Uh, but so if P is 75, um, determine the sh permanent shear strain when, oh, sorry, two separate problems. First, determine the shear strain development when P is equal to 75. Then we're going to figure out what happens when P is equal to 150. All right, so when P is equal to 75, where is that on this stress strain diagram? It is not just, it's not at 75. This right here is the stress. Okay, so they gave us a force. We've got to calculate the stress for that. We've got to calculate the shear stress for a bolted double shear joint, right? All right, so what is the shear stress? B over A, um, but it's, we need to divide that 75 by two, all right? 75 divided by two over the area, pi by four, 1.25 uh, squared. This is kips over inches squared. Uh, this would be shear stress, 30.56 KSI, right? Do you wish that we had just given you the 30.56 KSI on a silver platter so you could go to your diagram? Yeah, so that's not going to happen. So make sure you can figure out, okay, he's not telling me the stress, but he's giving me all those forces. I can calculate the stress, right? Or, okay, he, he told me that this, this, you know, bar is stretched by three millimeters, what is he really telling me? He's really telling me the strain, you know? Or we did a problem, I think, where I showed you that it changed in angle. So I was giving you the figure to give you the strain. So, you know, we're not gonna just give you the stress right here, 30.56, you're gonna have to work for it. All right, but now that you know this 30.56, then how can we find this strain right here? How can we find the strain? Right here, so 30.56. Uh, well, it's in the elastic region. It's in the elastic region. So I know that G is equal to tau over gamma in the elastic region. Um, or I can kind of look at these two triangles, which is exactly the same thing that I'm doing right here. G is 50 over 0 0.005 and tau, 30.56 over, and so what is gamma? Gamma is 0 0.00306 radians. And make sure that makes sense. I, have, I can't tell you how many times a student will just throw some numbers that obviously that would not make sense from that stress strain diagram. But that makes sense. You know, and, and it's linear from zero to 50. And so, you know, at, you know, if it was at 25, it'd be halfway there. This is past 25, so a little over halfway. Just make sure it makes sense. Okay, and that is what it asks for. Determine the shear strain. That right there is the shear, shear strain. All right. All right, now, second part. Okay, what if the applied force was 150, determine the permanent strain if we apply 150 and then remove it, all right? Okay, so if this was 150, tau V over A, but it's double shear, so 150 over two, pi by four, 1.25, 
squared. Uh, this is 61.12 KSI. Okay, this is a little bit harder, right? So the 61 would be up here in the uh, yielding region. All right. So before I start trying to unload it, first let me figure out where this point is. All right. Let me figure out where that point is for a stress of 61.12. I could do some triangles or interpolation. Let's see if I can do some interpolation. Let me do it one last time, maybe even color code it for you. All right, so I like to do like 75 minus 50, all right? Top minus bottom over middle, 61.12. Minus 50, top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. And let me make sure that the strain corresponds to that. This would be 0 0.05 minus 0 0.005. Run out of room. Over, I'm just going to call it X for now. That's what I'm looking for. Minus 0 0.005. All right, and you, you could have flipped both of these fractions and it'd be the same. You know, you, you could have done a lot of things and it would be the same. Be very careful that that spot corresponds with that spot, that those correspond with those, and then what you're looking for corresponds with that. All right, so I've got X is... Point zero two five one six. Okay, so what is that? So that is the strain while up here, right? While it is being loaded with that 150. Okay, but that's, that's not what it asks for. This is point, where's the point? Point zero two five one six. Okay, but that's not what it asks for. It asks for after it's unloaded, what is the permanent deformation? So I like to call this my unloading triangle right here. So I'm gonna redraw this unloading triangle. Draw it in blue right here. I know this height was in the y direction. What was that height? 61.12. And I know it unloads at the same slope of G. <laughs> this 50 over 0 0.005. And then this uh, base of my unloading triangle would be the recovery, the elastic recovery. Now the question isn't asking for elastic recovery, but that's the first thing I'm gonna calculate. Then I'll answer the question about permanent strain. So let's see, this G 50 over 0 0.005 is the same as 61.12 over Elastic recovery, the elastic recovery, 0 0.006122 radians. All right, so what's the permanent set? What's the permanent deformation? Well, if I was stretched to that and I came back, I recovered that, then what am I left with? So the permanent set would be 0 0.02516 radians minus 0 0.006122 radians is equal to 0 0.0189 radians. All right, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but in the past my students have struggled so much with loading and unloading that I'm overkill. I hope for y'all that you understand the stress strain diagram. Um, I'm given the stress, you can find the strain, get the strain, you can find the stress. You can unload it, you can answer what's the elastic recovery, what's a permanent deformation, what's a permanent set, things like that.